Hey, what's up, Tigers? This is Pepe uh, doing the second video in English, uh, uh, answering the questions from the user. In this case, uh, we got another question from the same user, Morazo. I'm going to translate for you guys since it's in Spanish. He's asking what he should do against this Black Order. So, g6, c4, bishop g7, knight c3. You remember that in the other video, we gave a recipe against a sniper. He is asking what he should do against d6, e4, and now knight c6. Of course, now black here can play knight f6, and this is the main line of the king's Indian, but he's uh, having troubles against this knight c6 idea. Because he was saying that after knight f3, bishop g4, it's not, it's not so clear what he should do. Basically, uh, in all these lines, uh, uh, white plays bishop e3 in order to protect d4, black wants to play e5, and then install. A beautiful knight on d4 and this is the kind of position that the black is aiming for so that's why after knight c3 d6 e4 knight c6 i'm going to recommend you another line which is not playing knight f3 i think this is for uh, what black is uh, aiming for and then there are many many interesting alternatives d5 is actually very interesting i took a look on this but i found uh, another interesting and aggressive line which is uh, gonna be my recommendation so I'm going to recommend you guys to play bishop b3, 100% of these uh, players play e5 in this position, d5, and now most of the players go knight c to e7. I'm going to try to explain you why. Knight d4 here is not that uh, precise, because after knight g to e2, black is not now on time to reinforce that knight on c5 by playing c5. This is actually a really bad move. You can just take on c6, knight takes c6, and now knight b5, and we are winning a pawn. And probably the game very soon right so that's why black is forced to take on e2 and after bishop e2 this is i would say uh, a better version of the king's indian since now we are living in development and c5 is coming extremely fast if black tries to play fast as well by playing a5 here you can just take and now black has to decide whether he takes with the g pawn or with the bishop he takes with the pawn we can use the fact that black has a castle jet and play bishop g5 and after king f8 g3, for example, I would say black uh, is a little bit worse, right? With the king on f8, c5 is in the air all the time. And uh, I, I would take white, uh, of course, uh, in every case. So if black takes with the bishop, then we can just play g4 fighting for the e4 square. And whenever this re bishop retreats, we can even continue by playing h4, uh, playing really aggressively. And uh, I really like mm, against, uh, against not against, again, uh, white position. Sorry for my English, guys. Sometimes it's actually quite uh, crap, right? Crap or shit, whatever you prefer. So the thing is, after d5, uh, black plays knight c to e7. And now there are many alternatives. You could play knight f3. You can play g4, it's a really interesting move as well, but the line I'm going to recommend you is uh, the aggressive h4 in this position. The idea is, of course, very simple. We're going to go h5, we're going to uh, grab our uh, opponent's balls and then uh, win the game, right? Black has uh, two options. He can do something against h4, uh, h5, sorry, or he can just uh, continue with his uh, plan by playing f5. Let's try to see first if black uh, wants to stop our h5 idea. He has two options, right? Uh, playing h5 or playing h6. Let's see what happens if black plays h5. We can just continue by playing queen d2. And now there are two options. Black could play knight f6, continue uh, with the development, or black could play bishop h6, intending to exchange his bad bishop for our good bishop, right? Uh, the dark square bishop. So if black continues with the normal plan by playing knight f6, we can just play facundo 3. And then after short castles, knight a3. Uh, this knight could jump to g5 or we could go long castle, knight f2, and then some plans related by playing g4 uh, in order to uh, attack uh, our blacks, uh, the black skin, right? And I think this position is pretty, pretty interesting for white. So uh, if black goes bishop a8, 6, it's true that he managed to exchange his bad bishop. But the thing is, we can take on a8, 6. And now this uh, knight on a8, 6 is actually completely misplaced. And it's not trivial, trivial how to complete development by black, right? Because now, actually, black can never, let's say after long castling, can never go short castle because of, because of obvious reasons. 
since this knight on h6 would be hanging. So he he's gonna have to waste two tempi by playing f6 and knight f7, and this could be pretty slow. So let's say f6, which v2, knight f7, and f4, and we are already attacking. If black goes short castling, um, we can continue development. There are many uh, interesting ideas related by playing uh, f5. Maybe f5 is just killing black in this position, right? Since now h5 is going to be hanging and opening the g file is going to be a disaster for white, for, for black, sorry. So that's why here after h4, uh, h5 is not a problem for white, right? h6 also uh, very risky because after h5, if you want to close the position with g5, then I close even more the position by playing g4 and we are playing for free on the queen side. Look at this bishop on, on g7. Uh, his parents uh, never gave him uh, candies when he was a child, right? So he's actually extremely sad here. He's the diarrhea of the team, right? So what can he do this bishop on g7, man? I don't want you in my team. Get the fuck out of here, right? Sorry, get the hell out of here. So bishop g7 is doing basically nothing, right, in this position. And we're gonna play for free. This is a typical clear advantage in these kind of positions. You play f3, then you play maybe knight e2, knight g3, bishop e2, you can even go short castling, and then b4, c5, you're playing for free. So that's why normally black plays here a 5 continuum with his attack and also aiming to develop this knight by f6. Here we recommend h5, 100% of players play here f4 because h6 is coming, f4, bishop d2, and now black has three main options here in this position. Black can play knight f6, allowing h6. Black can play knight h6, or black could close the position by play g5, reinforcing f4. g5 is the main move, let's start with the secondary, secondary lines. So the first move is knight f6. Allows h6, which is actually a double-edged decision, but I think it's the right move to play. Because now, probably, you're going to lose this h6 pawn, but black is going to retreat his bishop here, and then he's going to have to spend, like, 2 p to uh, capture this pawn on h6. And meanwhile, we're going to create a lot of content play on the queen side. Let's say knight f3, knight e to g8 in order to capture h6. But now, c5, Carlitos is coming, bishop h6, and now queen a4. A bishop d7, queen b4, attacking d6 and d7. Let's say king f7 and rook c1. Again, many nasty plans for white here. You can play knight b5, the, the queen can come to d6 as well. And if the bishop retreats to f8, you will have this nasty check on g5. So it's not that easy to protect d6. And if black goes, let's say king g7, just queen a3 is really uncomfortable for black. a6 doesn't stop anything. No, uh, you can still jump to b5 with your knight, right? So, position is actually uh, much easier to play for white here in this position. So that's why knight f6 is not the end of the world for us, right? Knight a6, you can just take on g6 and play knight f3. Let's say black plays knight f7, takes, takes, and queen b3. This is also more comfortable for white, for white so, sorry. It's not easy to complete development where you should put your king. And meanwhile, we're, we're going to play, of course, long castling. If black plays c6, it's also risky opening the d-file or the c-file. So I would take white, uh, of course, in this, in, this, in this position. And the uh, main move is g5. And here I'm going to recommend another uh, very interesting move, which is g4. Uh, the idea is the same as we saw before. If black does nothing, then we're going to play for free on the king side. Let's say, for example, a6. We just play a3, and then, as I told you, knight h3, knight f2, knight d3, bishop e2, b4, c5, etc. Short castling, we play for free. And if black uh, plays, for example, knight h6, f3, and c5, intending to close everything to make a draw. First of all, we are playing for free, and second, uh, uh, the position is not completely crossed. We can, uh, again, play our plan, knight a3, knight f2, and then uh, develop bishop e2, short castling, and then b4 at some point, the knight can come to d3, and if black tries to uh, protect everything on c5 with b6, there is another extra break related by bringing the pawn to a5. So, I would take white here, and uh, you can play until the end of the world, you can play until the next week, and black is gonna struggle in this position. So that's why I think maybe... Uh, if black uh, wants to win the game as well, he's got to take on g3. And here we're going to recommend a nobility, which is f3. 
Of course, f takes g3 is not a bad move, but I like f3 since we protect even more the center. And now the breaks with c6 are not that dangerous as is we, if we don't have a pawn on f3. The idea is rather simple. We want to recapture the pawn on g3 and then play queen c2 and long castle. Let's just try, uh, see a sample line, h6, we go g5 is attack, knight g2, knight f6, knight g3, short castle and queen c2. And black has to decide what he wants to do, because if it's got two breaks, c6 and g4. g4 is, I would say, is extremely risky, because now if you want to attack me, then maybe after rook g1, you have to think what uh, you're going to do about your king, right? So this is extremely risky for black. And if you play c6 here in this position, you can just play long castle in c takes c takes bishop d7 king b1 a6 and now you want to use the c file as well let's say queen d3 queen b6 bishop b3 and knight d1 with the idea if black goes rook a c8 just you can just go queen a3 and again this position you are the one putting pressure on the black side um yeah so this is my recommendation this is my recommendation against this particular order for white for black sorry knight c6 instead of knight f6 my recommendation is going to be bishop e3 and then after e5 d5 knight e7 h4 remember all these positions were actually the king side is close but you got this option of going c5 and b4 and uh, create counterplay on the queen side are basically uh, impossible to lose and you got uh, interesting options to put a lot of pressure in your opponent so i hope you guys enjoyed this uh, recipe and i'll be posting more videos uh, related with uh, some other uh, users questions so be good and don't drink if you drive all right because then you make uh, the car dirty it's been a pleasure for me this is pepin for chess 24 bye bye be good my friends take care tigers